Okay, so hi there everyone. We're now on our next video in mathematics in the modern world. We're still in the topic of operations of propositions, but in this video, we're going to focus ourselves with what we call the truth tables. So, um, what is a truth table? In reasoning, okay, in particular in logic, it is necessary to take into account the role of the truth values in logic. What is a truth value? A truth value um, of a proposition um, is that it is true um, if it is true, and the truth value of a proposition is false if it is false. So recall that a definition of a proposition is that it's a, declar it's a declarative statement, it's, and it's either true or false. So the truth value is the truthness or the falseness of that proposition. Okay, the, the truthness or truth, truthness or the falseness of that proposition. So also, um, we can get the truth values of each proposition, each uh, simple proposition or the, or the component proposition in a compound one. But in a compound proposition, um, we cannot get the values um, directly. We're going to need the help of what we call a truth table. So a truth table shows the relationship between the truth values of propositions. It is vital in determining the truth values of what we call, again, the compound proposition. So let's talk about them one by one. And we're going to recall the five um, logical op op connectors or operators we have. We have negation, conjunction, disjunction, by conditional and conditional, or shall we say the by, by implication or the implication. Let's start with the negation. So the negation of P is the opposite truth value of P. So the P can only have two values, right? It's either going to be true or false. So we're going to make use of a truth value to illustrate that. So P, um, we have again two truth val two truth values for P. P can either be true, or it can either be or it can be false. Now, if P, if P is true, then not P is the opposite truth value of P. So if P is true, hence its truth value if it is minus or if it is negative ne um, not P is going to be false, or it's going to be false. And if P is false not p, which is the opposite truth value of false, is going to be true. So that's how we look at the negation. Okay, it it would it will flip, okay, the truth value of one proposition. Let's have an example. So, given the proposition, the sky is not clear. That we will let that as our p, by the way. P is the sky is not clear. So what is the negation? The negation is the sky is clear, which is our not p. Okay, again, or we can write this as not p. Either way, it's it's the same. Just take note, um, the double negation still follows here. So therefore, we can say that, that not not P is equivalent to P. Okay, that's the double negation. Uh, just like in mathematics, we, if in algebra, we have minus minus X is just equal to X. So in logic, we also have this double negation. It is equivalent to P. Okay. Let's move on to conjunctions. Again, the conjunctions is making use of this symbol. Um, the conjunction of P and Q is true. It is true. P and Q is true if and only if both of them are true also. If if they're not both true, therefore it will always be false. So in illustrating the truth values of a conjunction, we will need a truth table, okay, since it's a compound proposition. And since we're dealing with two propositions here, namely P and Q, we will make we will need to use a longer truth table for that because we have um a combination this time, a combination of of truth values. Um, we have the first statement as P, second statement as Q, so they can be both true. It can be that the first statement is true, the second is false. It can be the first statement is true, false, the second is true. Uh, actually, they're not the same, if that's the case. And it can be that they're both false. So therefore, we have five combinations of, of truthness, of truth values, okay? T, 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 F, F, T, F, FF. So the pattern here, so that you won't forget. Okay, in the in P, we need to write first. We're going. We need to divide the the boxes into two. So we have four rows, rather four rows divided to two. The first two rows will be true. The second two rows will be false. We also continue this. Um, in the true, we divide them into two. So we have two here in the true. So we need to divide it into two. So that's going to be one each. So that's going to be true and false. Likewise here for the false, for all the false, we're going to divide this into two. So we since we have two rows, that's going to be true false. So that's how we going to, how are we going to do it? Okay, we're going to extend this also with three propositions in a while. So again, 
a conjunction, P and Q, is true when both of them are true. Um, first, what's the answer here? Are they both true? So clearly, they're both true. Therefore, the answer here is true. P and Q is true if and only if both the propositions are true. Next is, uh, for the second row here, are they both true? So clearly not because Q is false. Hence, your conjunction is going to be false. How about for the third row? Okay. Um, well, are they both true? No, it's not because the first proposition, P, is not true. That is, it is false. And lastly, um, it is very clear that it's, the answer is false since both of them this time are false. So that's how we evaluate conjunctions. Let me give you an example. So as an example, we will let P and Q to be these. So P is 2 plus 1 equals 5 and Q is 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. So if we're going to put them in a conjunction, so that is P and Q, that becomes 2 plus 1 equals 5 and 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. So this is your P and this is your Q, this is your end here. Now, the question is, what is the truth value of P and Q? Is it true or is it false? There can only be one. Okay, so let's let's try to analyze. P, 2 plus 1 equals 5 is false because 2 plus 1 is not equal to 5. It should be not equal here. And Q, 1 foot is equal to 12 inches, which, is, which makes it true. Okay, which makes it true. Meaning, our conjunction, since our P is false and our Q is true, then the conjunction is going to be false. We are adhering to the third row here. Okay, P is false, which is here. Q is true, which is here. Hence, our conjunction is false. Or you can just go back to the definition that a conjunction, for in order for it to be true, it must be that both of them are true. So since not both of them are true, so therefore it's going to be false. That is the conjunction. Okay, one more example for the conjunction. Um, Say we have P is a, squ a square is a closed-sided figure and Q is a rectangle which has four angles. So if we're going to write it as P implies Q, or sorry, P and Q. So what we have is a square is a closed-sided figure and a rectangle or rectangle has four angles. So since P is true and our Q is true, so therefore it adheres to the definition that um, it's only true if both of them are true. So hence, your, your conjunction is also true. Okay? So that's for your conjunction. Next is for the disjunction. For the disjunction, again, we're going to make use of the cup. The disjunction of P or Q is true if at least one of them is true. Otherwise, it's false. In short, it will only be false if um, both of them are false, actually, in short. So you can see that it's true if at least one is true. Okay. So let's look at this again. Again, I have explained this. Um, we have T, T, F, F, T, F, T, F. Now let's try. Um, for the first question, are they, is there at least one true here in the first row? Is, the, is it, um, I mean, is it at least, there is a, a truth value which is true? Yes, there is. Both of them actually are true. So hence your answer here is true. Um, second row, is there at least one true there? Clearly there is. So it's still true. Uh, third row, is there at least one true here? Yes, it, it has. That's the, the Q. So therefore, it's still true. How about for the fourth row? Meaning both, you can see that both of them are false. So therefore, there's no true truth value here. So there is, our condition is not satisfied. That is, it, at least one must be true. Therefore, the last row is false. So you can see from this column here that it's only going to be true if both of them are false. Or sorry, if it's only going to be false if both of them are false. Okay, as you can see. So that's for the disjunction, which is our or, our hat, our cup, rather. So just an example. Um, let's say P is 3 is even and Q is 100 is divisible by 2. So if we're going to make use of the disjunction, it's going to be P or Q or 3 is even or 100 is divisible by 2. So since P is false because 3 is, is, is odd and Q is true because 100 is indeed divisible by 2. So therefore, P or Q is going to be true because there is at least one true here. If we're going to refer to the table here, so it's on the third row. F for the for the P, true for the Q, hence your P or Q is still, is going to be true. Okay, so that's for our disjunction. Um, for our next example, for the disjunction, um, let, sorry, let, let, um, just, it should only have one let. Let P be a con be the constant pi is terminating and Q be 
3 squared is 6. So if we're going to put that in a disjunction, so it's going to read as P or Q is the constant pi is terminating or 3 squared is 6. Uh, you can see that both of them are false because pi is never terminating, thus it's irrational. And uh, 3 squared is equal to 9 because 3 squared is equal to 3 times 3. Oops, 3 times 3, which is equal to 9, not 6. So therefore, um, the answer here, the constant pi is terminating or 3 squared is equal to 9 is going to be false because both of them are false by the power of the disjunction. Uh, let's proceed to the conditional statements. Um, a conditional statement is false only if p is true and q is false. Otherwise, it's true. So the only moment that, it, that, 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 that an implication, the other name for this is implication, right? That the implication is false is when you have a, a false or rather a true hypothesis, but your conclusion is false, which is um, uh, logical because if your hypothesis is true, your conclusion cannot be false. So meaning um, it is going to be false if that's the case. So to give you one example, so we have P implies Q here. Um, the P is true and the Q is true, hence it's true for the first row. For the second row, P is true, but Q is false. So meaning your hypothesis gives you a false conclusion, which is false. That cannot be. Okay. A true hypothesis must always offer a true conclusion since your hypothesis is true. Um, third column, we have the a false hypothesis gives a true conclusion. So that's true. Um, also, for the last one, it's still true because it's not in the form of true false it's only going to be if in the if it's, if it's in the form of true false the implication is false so just take note that uh if the hypothesis is false the implication is going to be true regardless of what the conclusion is that is the, your first variable if it is false automatically the whole implication will be true regardless of what the conclusion is we call this um characteristic true by default okay so notice in the previous slide just a little bit um, all the values which is false, which are false in the in, in the hypothesis, um, technically these ones, okay, in fact these ones, they're all false in the hypothesis, but they all offer a true implication. So meaning this is what we call true by default, again, true by default. So by default it is true, whatever happens. So let's have some example. So let P be... Um, a positive square root of 4 is equal to 2, so we are enforcing that it should be positive here. Um, and Q is 10 is a prime number. So if we're going to make use of the conditional statement, even though it doesn't make um, much sense here. So P implies Q is if positive square root of 4 is 2, then 10 is a prime number. So just look at the, the letter P. It's true. A positive square root of 4 is indeed 2. Okay, and Q... 10 is not a prime number, that's false. So hence, your statement is going to be false by the virtue of um, row number 2 in your here. And by the, by the definition of conditional statements, it's only going to be false if you have a true hypothesis, but you ended up with a, fa with a false conclusion. So that's cannot that cannot be. Okay, let's proceed to the biconditional or the by implication. So the by implication is true if both of them have the same truth values. False if they have... Um, not different truth or if they have different truth values for false. So meaning by conditional means it's true if they're the same. So first row, are they the same? Yes, they are. So that's true. Second row, are they the same? No, no, they're not. So that's false. Third column, are they the same? No. So that's false. Last column, are they the same? So yes, that's true. So that's how you see by conditionals. Um, as an example, let's have it. Um, let's P be equal to 2 plus 1 equals 5 and Q be 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. So we're going to make use of the biconditional statements. That is um, P if and only if Q. P if and only if Q. So how do we write it in words? So we have 2 plus 1. That's your P. Um, if and only if um, 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. So therefore... Um, let's let's see if they are if they are true. So we have p as two plus one equals five. That's false. And one foot is equal to twelve inches. That's true. We know this. Um, we know this before in our previous um, conjunction. So by the by the by conditional rules, we can say that um, f is p. Okay. 
um, rather P is false, sorry, P is F or false, Q is true since they're not the same. By the by the definition of by conditional, they're not they're not the same. So therefore, the condi by conditional itself is false. That is, we are following the third row of this table here. So um, simply because they're not the same, so meaning the by conditional is false. Another example, um, let's have this let again. We ha I have written two lets. My goodness. So let P be again respect. Q be a trust people. So if we're if we're going to write that in a by conditional. P if and only if Q. So I gain respect if I if and only if I trust people. Okay. I gain respect if I, if and only if I sorry. It's a redundancy. I trust people. Typo. Okay. So we can see here this is our P. This is your if and only if your arrow, and this is your Q. You trust people. So um, I gain respect. Let it be true for your. For your case, I trust people true. So hence, since they're both true, um, the the biconditional itself is true by its definition. And you can see row one for that from the table. Okay, so those are the truth values. Uh, if we're going to mix up the the simple propositions and put them with different or combine them with different logical operators. Now, um, let's make use of the truth tables. Okay, to give us an overall point of view. Okay, since here we we know that it, that they're both true, so therefore the biconditional is true. Um, but what if we're going to make use of the truth table and then we're going to show all the possible choices that we can have? For instance, we have here determine the truth values of the following compound propositions. Number one. So what we have is not p or p, not p or p. So how can we do this? Um, let me show you how it's done. Not p or p, right? Not P or P. Okay. Um, sorry. Here. So we have here. Um, what we're gonna do is to write here the not P or P. Um, not P. I'm going to make use of this, or P. So we're going to make use of a truth table. So constructing one. Since since we only have one com one proposition here, so we only need two rows for that. So what we want is to end up with this compound proposition. So we need two rows. We need a P, we need the not P, and we need the um, not P or P. So we need that, those values. Okay, now let's try to answer it. Again, if we only have a single P, so it's only gonna be either true or Having the negation will will flip the value. So if it, this is true here, this is going to become false. If it's going to be false here, this is going to become true. Now, by the power of this thing, this uh, uh, this junction, um, it's true if there is at least one true for each of the statements. So we can see here that there's true here in the first row. Hence, the value here is true. In the second row, there's one value which is true. Therefore, this is true. Meaning, you can see that that um, this table here, not P or P, is always going to be true no matter what. No matter what will be the values of your, what whatever will be the values of your P, it's going to be true no matter what. And this is what we call a tautology. Tautology. So this is where if your, your truth values will, your truth table will give you in any case possible all the the values will be true no matter what. So that's what we call a tautology. Okay, so that's for your number one. That's for our number one, actually. Okay, let's write it down, number one. Let's proceed to number two. Um, number two, um, we have not P and P. Okay, not P and p so let's do that again here so for number two um not p and p so since we're only using a single um proposition so we're, let's make use of two two uh rows for that 
okay sorry it's not very it's not my stable that you will see <laughs> okay so we have it here okay and then um, we can have the values of p for only true or false right since it's only gonna it's only one letter one proposition so it's either true or false here it's going to be flipped so this becomes false this becomes true now instead of this junction that become this becomes here a conjunction so end not p and p so you can see the 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 definition of a conjunction is that it's only going to be true if and only if both of them are true for the first row it's clearly going to be seen that actually in the on both rows that um, all of them are mixed up with true and false okay so it's true false and false true meaning there's no s there's no um row that gives us all true hence our compound operation will be false no matter what it will be false no matter what so uh, this scenario is what we call a contradiction okay this is called a contradiction okay so where when whatever happens your truth values will always be false so that's what we call a contradiction okay so this is an example of what we call a contradiction everybody okay now let's move on to number three uh, for number three what we have is p implies q or q implies p okay this is quite long um okay but we're up to it uh just a moment let me move this a bit i think we need to make use of the whole screen for this one okay anyways okay um let's construct a table so in constructing the table what we have is we need a p first and the q so since there are two of them we need four we need four tables for that four rows rather for that so what we want actually is p implies q or q implies p okay let's get first this one the q, p implies q p implies q Okay, and then we'll write also this one q implies p q implies p so they are they are not the same okay remember that so it's not the nicest table that you can see in your whole life but it's a table okay and then we have then the whole compound proposition so if p implies q or q implies p so this is what we're looking for here Okay, actually we're just going to write a truth value there so it's not going to be necessarily long anyways um let's start okay again um divide this by two we need to pat have a pattern here for the for the for all the pairs to be considered do so we have true true uh, we have true false we have false true and we have false false and actually it's going to be true true or true false and then pf true false true false okay let's get first the the implication so p implies q p implies q so meaning it's going to be false if um p is true but q is false so here we have no trouble in the first row they're both true hence it's true here it's in the second row that t is the hypothesis is true but the the, the conclusion is false this is false and rows Rows three and four are true by default. Let's put it there. Okay, now let's do the Q implies P. Now, don't get or don't confuse yourself. Q this time is our hypothesis and P is the conclusion. So it looks like this as an arrow. Okay, now let's take a look at that. True, true, we have no problem here. False, true. By by default, this is going to be true because the, the, the hypothesis is false. Here in the third row, true, implies false which is false true implies false here down below true by default it's going to be true okay so we're done with our fourth row uh fourth column let's go to the last column so what we're going to do is to apply the or with them so or says that it's going to be true if 
at least one of them is true or it's only going to be false if 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 both of them are false so there's at least one true here that's true um there's at least one true here that's true um there's at least one true here that is true and there's at least there's two truths here truths here so therefore that's also true hence what we end up still again is what we call a tautology tautology okay so that's what we call a tautology and let's go back to our slides shall we so we have answered one two and three um one is again as a tautology two is a contradiction three again is a tautology so I'll give this to you as an assignment since um, our videos are, our video is quite long already. So we'll answer this in the next video um, for number four. Okay. Uh, take note number four involves three propositions. We have um, we have P, we have Q, and we have R. So since it's three propositions, I'm going to tell you already there are eight col the eight rows that you need. You need eight rows. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this in the next video. Hopefully you learned something today and see you soon. Okay, thank you very much.